Angus. And I'm Andrew. And we're from Cracker Wines. Today we have a new selection of wines we do. to offer, but these are not your average wines. These are not your day-to-day, I'm made by a winemaker kind of wines. No. They're special wines. No, no. Andrew knows the story. Oh, that's right. These are actually wines made by cricketers. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't no 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 it's not really made by no, cricketers no, no, they just helped not. out so this is the Botham Merrill Willis and so the Botham being Ian Beefy Botham that's right uh, the Merrill of course being Jeff Merrill the South Australian mustachioed winemaker and Bob Willis being the final one the English fast bowler fine English captain yes may have even won the odd series from Australia maybe, maybe one maybe. perhaps perhaps, perhaps. Perhaps. Um, so the whole, the whole, the backstory behind this was that apparently a couple, I don't know how many years ago it was, and of course this all could be totally mythical, but um, apparently... <coughs> Jeff, Jeff Merrill, mythical. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently Jeff overheard Beefy Botham saying about how crap Australian beer was. <coughs> he was slagging it off, which is obviously particularly rude. Uh, and so he said, hey, look Beefy, you may have some a beef with the beers, but why don't you come back and try some of my fantastic wines? Try some of our local plonk. Try some of our local plonk. And we will we'll get you on the train. That's exactly right. Get you on the wine train. That's right. And so after Beefy stopped being um, famous... Beefy. Famous, um, well, he's still Beefy. Uh, stopped being a famous cricketer. He then went, hey, I don't think I might get into this whole wine production thing. Which, of course, bought this label. Yeah. I mean, these these are kind of... I think these are all for the UK market, really. Yeah. I, I think so, too. So, yeah. So we got we got both of them. We got Merrill. We got Willis. Uh-huh. Together. They get together for blending. Yes, they do. They fly yeah. in every year. They come in BA first class. Straight yeah, of course. Adelaide Naturally. International Airport. <laughs> um, and they taste the wines. They decide what they like. They put it in a bottle. Um, and here we have three wines. Right. 08 Chardonnay. Um, 06 Shiraz. No 06 Cabernet. 06 really good South Australian vintage. And I yeah. think we really see that in those wines. So the Shardy, mate. Yeah. What do you think of the Shardy? Well, I think that, look, it's a... It's quite. A, it's probably not the best of the three. No, I look. I know, we, me and Angus both agree that we think the reds probably the bigs of this. Um, I know that Jeff in particular is is renowned for making big reds and yep. making big structure styles. Of Old reds. fashioned Australian. Old Australian fashioned, one. yeah. You know, Jeff was one of the real guys to break through the UK market. Like, yeah. I remember seeing this old video with him and Jancis talking about Aussie wine and that kind of thing, and he really he did a lot. I mean, we don't we probably don't hear as much from these days, but. Gee, the wine still has some, some style in an old-fashioned way. Yeah, very much so. And I think that this Chardonnay probably is quite a, um, a traditional Chardonnay. Yep. We're talking about quite a pe- like a, quite a peachy and, yeah. and broad and generous style of Chardonnay. Yeah, but it's, it's good. Just... It's 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 generous. It's yeah. it's fulfilling. You, you finish a glass and you want another. Yeah, yeah. Although again, I think that yeah, the reds are the pick. So starting off here with so these are all McLaren about, except for the final Cabernet on the end here, which has a little bit of a mystery. Secret ingredients. And the secret ingredients. Um, so this one here is a Shiraz, and as we saw sort of saying, 2006, fabulous vintage in the Vale. Fabulous. Super. Really good. Um, and I think that this also really, now being a 2006, it really, the fact that it's now five-year-old, yeah. it's starting to get into the groove. Yeah. You know, everything's starting to integrate a little bit more, you know, finding that the the, the, the sharp edges are starting to soft a little bit more. Yeah. Man, you're really and, also, and also, like, you know, 06 was really the, you know, the time where Australian winemakers really going pretty hard in the oak, mm. I think. And this wine's clearly had a fair whack of American oak, but it's just coming beautifully into the wine now. Like, you get yeah. a you get a nice kind of vanilla bit of oak, but it's it's balanced with that fruit, with that, you know, black black currant, yep. you know, chewy kind of fruit that you get from the bar. Yeah, definitely. I think you can see that. This is a really generous, rich style of, hey, this is Australian Shiraz sort of wine. Yeah. And I think that's that's what it comes down to. You know, for this, I mean, I think the, the recommend retail price is about 28 bucks. Yeah. And we're sort of selling them at, what, I think... 115, 14, Yeah, about 14 bucks. It says, I'm Australian Shiraz and I'm proud and give me an Angus steak straight away. Yeah, and I think this actually could even better with some time too. Yeah. Like, I would be afraid of putting this away for another three or four years without yeah. it even trying I would agree but probably the pick is the Cabernet and yep. Andy's reckons that Jeff you know generally his Cabernet is better than a Shiraz which, I think. Is, which is uh, you know controversial exactly. to say the least yep. but um, for this one I would definitely agree I mean look at the colour it's got this yep. big it's got this really deep colour mm. which shows pretty good wine and then there's a bit of Kunawara in there it's not yeah, just Vale definitely. it's Kunawara you know the likes of Petaluma and Redmond and Bowen and Zima you know they show you know this finesse of Kunawara it's not just a mm. big Mouthful of wine's also got this kind of violets, perfume, bit of leafiness, and it gives real proper Cabernet character. Yeah, definitely. And I think you can actually smell that you've got a little bit more, yeah, a little more finesse. You've got real varietal flavours going. I'd, be, I'd pay twenty five bucks for this. Isn't yeah, it? I think so. And I think that the, out of all these, this is really the smartest wine. And again, this is something that's it's it's going to keep going. The pattern is really still quite prominent. So mm. look for, for sort of the price of this. It's it's a whole lot of wine. 
It, it's a and whole I, lot of one. And I reckon a lot of people these days they're looking for good Cabernet. Mm. Like they kind of know where the good Shiraz is, but they're a bit they're a bit shy on the good Cabernet. Mm. This is a really solid mouth filling Aussie, you know, Cabernet. Fair work of oak, but the Kunawara just presents its own. Mm. Excellent talents. Yeah, really smart. And so there we go. They were the they are the both the Marilis or they BMW are, wines. They are BMW wines. And look, they are I know it's winter. I know it's the footy season. If you love sport, you'll love these wines. Yeah. You don't need to just be, you know, if you if you don't like cricket, don't worry about it. These wines are Aussie wines, made to please. Cracker.